So let me tell you how I got it. I really became a research into PTSD after doing psych farm research, is that um, because people in my clinic were having great success with a very bizarre method called EMDR. Yeah, I was going to ask you about EMDR. It's as bizarre as it gets. Ele uh, eye movement. You call eye yeah, movement desensitization, desensitization and reprocessing. And you ask people to remember what they saw, what they felt, what they, but you don't ask people to talk about it. And as people go there, you ask them to follow your, your fingers as you move your fingers from side to side about in front of you. How bizarre can you be? Huh? And so we saw people getting better. And we went to NIH, and with Rachel's help, you're very important at grant, um, we got the grant, the only study, uh, grant ever to study EMDR, and we had dramatic results with this bizarre method. And then we tried to get the money to study what happens in the brain. It took us about 20 years of stealing from other grants to finally do that study. And what we found is that moving your eyes around changes the circuitry of the brain and allows your brain to engage in a different way. So it started off being bizarre, but at the end it turned out to be something remarkable in terms of you change circuitry of engagement with material in the brain. Do you think it took a long time to study do that. Do you think that something yeah. about the eye movement has some connection to evolutionary biology or some, 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 some I have no deeper idea, habit actually. or motor function of the brain? You know, but, but it, I, I travel a lot. I go to a lot of miserable places in the world and see what people do. And I find that in like other places, Hood. people do very different things. Eh? Where you go to Chechuan, people do Qigong for PTSD. And they used to do Qigong with people, and they seem to benefit from it. And you go to India, and people do yoga for PTSD. So we are caught in our Western paradigm of yakking and drugs. Yeah. No, so, no, 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 just, no, no, no. Just, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Bessel. <laughs> so the answer to the question about the eye movements is that you can test that hypothesis. Yes, you Because can. you can do what is called a dismantling study. Yes, you can. And what a dismantling study is, is I'll give one way, I'll do the instructions and do the EMDR with the eye movements, yep. and another group will be randomized to a condition where I'll do everything exactly the same way, but I'm not going to do the eye movements. So, And then you see which group has a better outcome. Um, and you know what the results of those studies are, right? Why don't you tell them? No, but... The results are that you don't need the eye movement. So, there isn't something magical about the eye movement, but maybe the eye movement facilitates a process in clinical practice because it gives you a focus. The idea, it's, it's, very, it's not that much different than how psychedelics work in that it, it, it is helping you get into an internal state where you can bring something up. It's not saying, I want you to think about this thing. Mm -hmm. That's. That's really what I think both you and I, where we agree is, is the limitation of current approaches. You have to go in with a specific trauma narrative, but for most people, the job is they have to find it. So with EMDR, you're creating a condition that is conducive to allowing that memory to, to come. Now maybe there's something about a therapist doing this, maybe, of course, changes the brain, but we don't know if that is why it works. No, we don't know. Right. And you know, you say, yes, you can study it, but I wrote five grants to NIMH to study the mechanism of EMDR. We didn't get the grant. <laughs> so if there's no money, you cannot story. study it. That, you know? That's a completely different issue. Yeah. But for, for no, the people that studied it, yeah, but, that was the legitimate question that they asked. Yeah. And um, that was the answer that they got. So, but it, it illustrates something really important because you can have a, bi, a, a, ch a brain change related to something, but, but that might not be the thing that is causing the yeah. internal change that people are experiencing. That could be besides the point, you know, yeah. true, true, and unrelated. Yeah. What I think is really powerful about EMDR is that it doesn't insist that you know what's wrong. Sure. It, it, uh, it sets a stage for you to maybe explore it, and clinicians that work with it and patients that have had it report that it's really useful and it's tolerable. Mm -hmm. So I that's why it's a really... Um, 
important thing. Now, the cognitive behavioral people say, well, it's just another form of exposure therapy. <laughs> it's not. Um, yeah. you, know, they're co I, you know, they want to co-opt it of, yes, of course, it's a systematized way. It's just we're not saying the words out loud, remember, but you're exposing yourself to your own traumatic material. In your writings, I remember very specifically, Basil, you were describing that you were trying very, at first, you were asking probing questions about the problem, yeah. and you were kind of chastised for that by the patient, <laughs> and you had to sort of train yourself to say, hold that thought, but not to ask what the thought was, mm -hmm. not to necessarily probe. So in that sense, you were saying you were coming to the idea that it wasn't exposure therapy because you weren't forcing them to tell you. It wasn't about right. what you understood exactly. about the Exactly. It's patient. not about whether I approve of you or I think you're good. It's really facilitating people go deep inside of themselves. Mm -hmm. But the other f interesting thing about the EMDR study was that so Rachel was part of it and we measured serum cortisol. And we found absolutely no relationship between people's clinical improvement and their cortisol. So we have these great biological markers, mm. but the biological markers didn't change, yeah. even though the mental changes were very dramatic.